All right, welcome to video four of the Captivate video tutorial series. Uh, today we're talking about visualizers. So you can see here I'm on the Captivate visualizer tab. And on the left, it looks very similar to our, our light scene tab in that I've got all these visual, visual scenes that I can cycle through. And on the right here, I've got a, uh, a visualizer preview. And I, if I click this button, it actually will pop out a separate window where you can display your visualizer full screen on a projector or a TV. On the, and then to the bottom here on the left side of this dividing line, we have the visualizer type and any parameters. And then on the right, we have uh, any active effects. So let's take a look at how to create these. I'm going to start with the new visualizer here. Just starts with the default uh, text particle type. Uh, and I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do a very simple visualizer, which is the cube sphere. So you'll notice here, I've got just a few parameters. So let's start changing these. You'll notice that nothing, nothing actually changes at first until I hit apply here. And so I'm going to find a value I like, and then I'm going to modify the size to get a value I like. And then down here, there's a slider that's actually got two values. It's like a, got a range of values. And so the way that this works, uh, these green sliders that have a range, they actually connect uh, your that that visual parameter to the current light scene's epicness. So if you you remember from the last video, we went over how to make these light scenes, and at the end we we assigned each one an epicness. And that kind of was us telling Captivate how epic this scene is, so that Captivate knows how to choose scenes based on their epicness but it's also a great way to convey to our visual scenes uh, how epic the current light scene is so that they can follow suit. And so if I click on this slider um, and just move it around, I, I can move it as a single point so I can actually change the speed of these cubes. However, if I hold Command and click, then I can set a range. And so right now, uh, Let's, let's look at how this changes with uh, different light scenes and different epicnesses. So I have a MIDI controller plugged in here on my right that allows me to cycle through the scenes. And you'll notice that they're kind of going from low epicness to high epicness as I go up my uh, keyboard here. And um, I've also got, uh, I got a button that'll do a very chill scene here and then a button that'll do a very epic scene. So let's go back and forth between those two. So right now we have a chill scene things are moving very slowly. If I switch to an epic scene, things move very quickly, and then I can move back. And so you'll see with, with very minimal effort, we get uh, some visual scenes that are just automatically kind of following suit with how epic our light scenes are. And this is really cool because you can create a single visual scene that can stay, um, that can stay active for a while, and it will actually adapt to the epicness of the light scene. And so with very little effort, you get a great synchronization between lights and visuals. And it doesn't end there. We've also got this effects tab to the right. So let's add some effects. Uh, the default is a pixel, pixel effect. So you'll notice that we can um, pixelate our image. Uh, we've also got a bloom that kind of like highlights, like kind of makes the, uh, the bright areas glow. Maybe we've got a, a motion blur that, that makes things blur under motion. So if I, let's see, change this up a little bit. And you'll notice that kind of makes things glow. I'm going to add back in my, my speed range here. And let's see what else we got. Uh, I think another, another, another cool one is this, this film type. Kind of makes it look like an old video or like, a, like an old CRT TV. And then the last, uh, the last effect, you can look through all these effects as much as you want. Um, and actually, you can even combine them. So I can do uh, pixel and film. You could reorder these. And the last effect I'm going to look at, and actually, I'm not a huge fan of the way that looks. So I'm going to do maybe bloom, and then maybe film. Yeah. All right. And then let's do, I'm going to change the strength. All right. And now uh, the last effect I'm going to talk about is the, the light sync effect. This is kind of 
the like a very like a very special effect, uh, a very special captivate effect, that you'll notice I turn it on, and it actually kind of allows this visual to synchronize with what the lights are doing beyond just the epicness that we talked about earlier. So now I've got all of these things happening. So let's let's see what I can change. So first of all, you'll notice it's it's moving left and right with the lights, and I can turn that off by. Uh, changing this obey position toggle and if I hit apply just like um, just like in our our visual parameters the effect parameters you need to hit apply as well before they take effect so if I turn off the obey position it's no longer obeying the position of the lights and if I turn off I can turn off this obey obey color and I can actually put this somewhere in the middle if I want to just want it to obey the color a little bit but maintain some of the original color uh, and I can even, so you notice it's even got obey strobe checked. So if I do a strobe, the visual strobes alongside the lights. And, and then also right now it's obeying even the master, but I can turn that off if I want to. And so with this light sync effect, you can do a lot. And so you can quickly see that even though there's only a handful of visualizations, and we're going to add to this visualization library um, very rapidly. This is like one of our top priorities. Uh, and a handful of effects, by combining visualizations and effects, you can create an infinite amount of different, um, different types of visualizers. And so now we're going to look at, uh, feel free to check out all these visualizer types and mess around with them. Um, we're going to look at one more in this video, and that is the local media type. And so with, with this visualizer type, you can actually add your own images and videos, which uh, is really cool. And it uses the effects just like any of the other visualizers. So here I've got, let's see. I've got a whole bunch of just kind of stock videos picked out. And uh, I'm going to hit apply. And it'll start cycling through those every two beats. So I can change this if I want to um, to every four. And it'll change every four beats. Change it to every one. And assuming your computer is fast enough, it'll be able to, to cycle. Um, anyways, right now, so it's obeying the, the color of the active light scene. And it's uh, I'm going to have it obey the position as well. And you can see, like again, with very minimal effort, we have these, these custom videos that are kind of following along with, with what our light scenes are doing. And so we didn't have to work very hard for this, which is really, really cool. Um, and yeah, so feel free. You can add other effects you want. You can, you can change the order of them. You can, um, it's, it's, I don't know, it's very fun to play with. And it all works live. And then I think once you have your visuals all designed, you can, uh, just like the light scenes, you can turn them on auto. And so we can have these visuals all change automatically. And oh, actually, I've got my master all the way down. I'm going to turn that back up. Um, and so just like that, you can have all these scenes that dynamically adapt. And you can use the light sync effect type to, to make them synchronize with the lights. You can use these, these green epicness range sliders to, to have the, the light uh, to have the visualizer kind of adapt to the epicness of the light scene. And uh, between those two things, you can create a really cool visual experience, a visualizer experience that just matches perfectly with your light show. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching and uh, go make something epic.